What's up guys and thank you for checking out another Calvinist Buster. Today we are taking a look at 1 John 2.2 and this is a very common text that's sort of presented as something that is uh, blatantly contradicting uh, Calvinism, in particular the doctrine of limited atonement or particular redemption that says that Jesus died specifically and effectually for his people as opposed to just sort of generally for a nameless, faceless group. Um, this text is kind of presented in such a way that implies that Jesus died for even the unbelieving, even those who would uh, reject him. So we're going to take a look at that and see if this really works as a Calvinist buster. Um, let me first read the text. I'll start in the verse uh, before. Um, 1 John 2, 1 and 2 says, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So if you guys have not seen my... Um, previous video on John 3.16, I encourage you to check that out. I broke into this a little bit more, but uh, really the word world in the New Testament has somewhere between 7 and 12 different um, meanings depending on the context of it, uh, 7 to 12 depending on which commentator, scholar you like, that sort of thing. Um, so, okay, so who is the hour here? He's the propitiation for our sins. Um, so this book does not seem to be written to a specific church in the same way Paul wrote, you know, Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians, things like that. But it does seem to be a specific group of believers that John was writing to. Um, but anyway, our here is contrasted with whole world. So so again, we have to kind of figure out what these two uh, things mean that are contrasted with one another. Um, logically, linguistically speaking, it could refer to a, a few things. That is, uh, the whole world here could refer to a few things. It could be the world of the Gentiles. It could be uh, the world of the elect. So the world beyond the specific or intended audience that would first receive the book. Um, or it could be uh, every, every single individual. Um, so let's take a look at these couple options here. So the first when we have the world of the Gentiles. Um, this is true, even if this is not John's specifically intent. We know elsewhere in Scripture this is affirmed. Uh, Acts 11, 18, Acts 26, 20 um, talks about God granting repentance to uh, the Gentiles as well, so the world of the Gentiles. Um, the second thing, our second option here would be the world of the believing or the elect. So this would be the world beyond the specific uh, intended audience. So not just us here and now, but everyone who believes wherever, whenever, whatever, tribe, tongue, whatever. Um, this is another one. This is also true, again, whether or not this was John's specific intent, this is true. This is uh, the same way that I believe world is used in uh, John 3, 16 and 18, right? It's not just Israel, it's the world in contrast with, uh, with Israel, whoever uh, repents and believes wherever. Um, now, the, the third option here, um, saying that the whole world means every single individual, including those who reject Christ. Um, this is the way that this text is typically presented as sort of a Calvinist buster, but unfortunately this is the um, the option that has the biggest difficulty with it. And, uh, and that is specifically because if this was John's intent, John would be contradicting what he wrote earlier uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 36. Uh, that text says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains uh, on him. Um, so propitiation is the settling of wrath. Uh, it means to have the wrath removed, to be at peace with the one that you owe something to. Um, so John 3.36 very clearly says that the wrath of God remains on the one who rejects Christ, on the unbeliever. Um, so this cannot mean that those who reject Christ are propitiated. Um, so again, if 1 John 2.2 2 is, in, is intended to mean or interpreted as meaning, uh, including the unbelieving, um, then John would be blatantly contradicting himself. So this, this simply is not a viable option. Um, so again, uh, if the whole world means the world of the Gentiles, that works, that's consistent with Scripture, that's consistent with John, that's true. Um, if the world means not just those here and now, but those, uh, you know, thousands of years from now in other tongues, tribes, nations, etc., this also true, this is also uh, works. This is probably the position that I would take here, this option here, uh, but to present it as a Calvinist buster as though uh, it would mean that even the, those who reject Christ are propitiated, um, that reading leads us to a blatant contradiction. So again, this text just simply does not work as a Calvinist buster. Um, all right, that's it for this one. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll be back probably another week or so with another one. Um, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, grace and peace.